Hi, everyone. This is Colette Marie Steffen. You're listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. And we're also live on Facebook and we'll be on YouTube later. And um, I'm really, really, really happy today to have my, um, what I, the, the, the dynamic duo on the show today. Um, we are taking callers if you would like to call in 1-800-930-2819. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about like, let's, um, well, there's a, I have a, a way of saying it and they say it nicer. I, I, I have a new program, just so you know, on Thursdays where you can, it's called Get Your Shift Together. And for $39.99, <laughs> you can come on for half an hour and depending, there's at the most seven other people on. And I'll energetically shift whatever problem you have in that moment so you can move forward. And um, they're saying it a little bit nicer, more like, um, how do you say it, Lucianne Shard? <laughs> hey, Colette. Well, we're, we're talking about what am I actually here to do in this life and how do I really get what I actually want? So <laughs> sort of the same way. And, and, and Morgan, I'd like to introduce you. you um, they've been on the show several times here. Is <laughs> there's Morgan. Hi. It's so good to connect with you um, uh, and the Replenishing Life Project. Um, I have been so busy myself. Um, I just wanted to um, say that uh, what I, I, for myself, I've had a really kind of challenging week because my daughter had a freak accident at work and um, she had to have surgery on her wrist. She cut it and luckily she was wearing a big watch and it, um, stopped her from um you know um, puncturing the the major artery here but she had to have um surgery here and she just had that last night so i've been kind of like focused on her for the last three days <laughs> gone into mummy had to correct myself not to worry <laughs> and then got 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 in a fight with her got nice and neutral <laughs> and then we were texting each other i love you i love you too <laughs> And so she's safely out of surgery now and everything's good and she doesn't have pain and, and, you know, so she says thank you to all of you that, you know, knew about it and, and um, are working. And for me, it's kind of like, I didn't find out she was like home and safe until around midnight. So I said, I'm just going to turn the show over to these two beautiful replenishing people. <laughs> And because I'm really curious as to what you've been up to since we last got together and, you know, tell us what you're up to. Tell us um, your feelings on, the, on the, the, the new moon that just came up. I know you're very knowledgeable about that. And let's go for it. Call in 1-800-930-2819. If you just want to say hello, you're lonely, you want to get your energy shifted and or you want to ask these two beautiful ladies a uh, question. Oh, thank you so much, Colette. That's such a beautiful introduction. And um, yeah, just lots of love and light to your daughter and for her to mend quickly. Um, so what have we been up to? I mean, we have been creating and expanding behind the scenes. And um, we have our YouTube channel that's going, uh, which is really exciting. We're also launching a podcast soon and we're running community classes. Um, so our community is really building and growing in a, in a wonderful, magical, organic way. But we'll get more into that. Um, just talking about the astrology of the time, I mean, uh, 2020, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it was yeah. Any vision? <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I don't even know where to begin. Uh, you know, we've we've just come out of Mercury retrograde. Thank goodness, yet another Mercury retrograde, plus all of these incredible eclipses that we've had. Um, and as you were saying, on Monday we had the new moon in Cancer. So you know, the the sign really of home, family and nurturing. Um, so, you know, time to really repair um, that, that area of your life. So, you know, with, with a card in my deck, which continue on, I'll show you. Oh, awesome. Answer card. So, on. you know, the thing with 2020 being such an emotionally charged year so far as it has been, 
um, you know, the best thing to do with this new moon energy that we're still in, actually, because it's only Wednesday, is to really use the time to meditate on what you've been through and to remember and remind yourself that it's important to process emotions, particularly with Cancerian en energy, you know, rather than letting them stew. So that's just a little sample of what we're in right now. And it feels like cancer. I'm so like, like this is a typical, no offense, cancer energy. Adolescent girl, she's gonna show up the last card because <laughs> the drama is building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that to me, that energy is very, like you think about girls arguing in grade four. Mm -hmm. um it's kind of like that middle adolescent energy where pisces energy is more is watery but it's mature yeah i hear you and, yeah pisces being the end of the zodiac yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah you know but cancer also is a cardinal sign so we have you know a lot of leadership qualities within that so oh, yeah. what and i talk about is the divine feminine leadership that's actually being birthed right now. And this, you know, a chance for the, that immaturity to step into maturity now would be, you know, that's a great time. And yes, a great time to still, still to set your intentions. You know, it doesn't have to be exactly on the new moon that you do it. Um, you know, there's a, there's a good window this week to look at that. And yeah, this is the cancer card. So you can see that. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm just going to move this over this way a bit. there. Can you see that? Mm, no, yeah. you know I mean, like, yeah, when I think of cancer energy, it's so powerful because yes. this is around the age when, when young girls become women. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was really interesting. I actually had a bit of a, I was working with a client and it came up. Why do women refer to other women that are powerful women that they're doing powerful things with as girls mm -hmm. or like why can you be standing in the bank and you know you're standing in line and um the the full-grown man in front of you says oh i want to i'm waiting to see that girl go ahead <laughs> and and but you don't see someone saying oh i'm going to go that um see that boy it's going to be more like a, you know that's it. people just don't generally say that and so we were talking about that how yeah this chance for becoming very mature yeah. like, like it's 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 there's a, a beautiful maturity about the way adolescents deal with stuff <laughs> yeah and the other thing that you know just in alignment with that with the cancer energy is you know the way that i like to see it is it's it's such a great opportunity to reparent yourself you know that's part of that maturity is tuning into your own instinct as to how you you would care for yourself how you want to care for that that uh that inner child um, so this is all really good stuff. Good time to do this. I would like to ask you something about this because this is this is what happens when the three of us get together. I always find like these. I get these. Oh my goodness! I got to remember to talk about this. Is do you feel because some of the most powerful, strongest moments in my life personally have been what I've learned from my daughters, mm. and that is the most powerful of all. And I've met some really amazing, cool, intelligent people you know and I've, I've been I'm very fortunate that way but my daughters have taught me so much and mm -hmm. I find that when daughters bring their moms to my seminars that there would always be this huge powerful shift and so if we can recognize that perhaps our, our children come in for us or we come in for our parents yes to make everybody more powerful Mm -hmm. then it sort of changes the dynamic a little bit oh I mean, um, yeah i we have to we're, we have a short break break to take here so um when we come back we're going to talk some more about this like do call in um it's good to um be with people who are in the replenishing mood <laughs> and so um we have your back here we'll be back 1-800-930-2819 Let's get our shift together and make things happen that are beautiful. <laughs> we'll be right back.
Hi everyone, this is Colette Marie Steffen. You're listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. And we're live on Facebook. We have the dynamic duo here, Lucy Ann Chard and Morgan B. And we're talking, um, they've started the Replenishing Life Project and it's really taking off to new heights and it's all exciting. And so what we're talking about now is how to um, move forward. But before we wanna do that, um, can you just share your contact information? Because I don't want to forget, how can people get in touch with you? How can they become part of your project? And, you know, what's it, a, just a little bit more about what it's about so that they can do that. Okay, yeah. Um, so we do have a uh, private Facebook community if you'd like to join. Um, so it is a Replenishing Life uh, Project. That is the group name. So you can sign up there. Um, if you want, we have, we are offering a lovely uh, recorded cord clearing meditation. And you can get that by um, signing up for the email list. And that'll actually give you access as well to the Facebook community. Um, so if you go to bit.ly, so bit.ly forward, sl forward slash replenishing life. Uh, replenishing life, then that'll take you to the page where you can sign up for that. Awesome. Awesome. And so tell us, how do we move forward now? <laughs> how do we get what we want? I love it. Get what you want. How? <laughs> yeah. So, well, that's an interesting question. Like, how do we figure out what we we really truly want because sometimes it's you know it's easy to say oh I, I want that shirt or I want those shoes but when it comes to what we really really want in life like what you know or how we see our lives sometimes it's a little a little bit more confusing and so um, a couple of of things that Lucy and I have discovered have been that have been really helpful tools are human design and astrology. And so for those of you that aren't familiar with human design, it's a, th a synthesis of Eastern and Western astrology, uh, astrology, the I Ching and Kabbalah. It's all a combination of that. And what it, um, what it gives you, it's similar to like an astrology chart. Um, it'll give you what's called an authority and each person has um, their authority. And so <laughs> trying to explain this in, in very, um, you know, very clearly is that, so my, for example, my emotional, or my authority, sorry, is emotional. So what that means is for decision-making, I'm designed to wait before I respond to make any decisions. I'm not designed to make that decision in the moment instantaneously. And I know we can do some shifting to, to speed that up a little bit. Um, so, but in general, if you want to start with that before you, you, you get good at really shifting the energy, um, mm -hmm. that's been really helpful for me to know that I can take the moment to feel into it uh, before I make that decision. Take your time to then express yourself. Yeah. Right. And, and feel and everything in the body and the energy field. This is so interesting because um, I told you that I started this face yoga teacher certification course and I'm revisiting my um, face reading and the psycho psychosomatic therapy. Um, you know, I've been integrating all that. And it's really interesting because even in your face, you know how you said you are built a certain way, your emotional is here in your face mm. and you can divide a face into these three categories and if you look at morgan's face her beautiful face she has a typical strong emotional that's where the most of the the her face is the emotional area and wow. so people like that have a tendency to be and i just found it interesting how you said you were built this way and that's very much you were built this way <laughs> <laughs> So it's yeah. fascinating, you know, to think about that, that if you're given permission to be able to express yourself in a way that you feel comfortable doing so, mm. um, how many people have we maybe not allowed to really um, express themselves 
in a way that would benefit the world because we've been so busy insisting that they do it in this way rather than in the way that they are comfortable and the most um, expressive in. And so I think that's beautiful. And so that's one of the things that you got, that you work with is how many categories is there in those authorities? Yeah, there's, oh, there's a, a how many, like five, six, seven, uh, Oh my gosh, I lost count. But there, there are different authorities. So some people are designed to make decisions in the moment, instantaneously. Sometimes it's more of a subtle, intuitive. And then other people actually, um, it's it's an outer. It's called outer authority. So it's it's like finding someone you can talk to as a and using them as a sounding board, so you can hear your truth within your words. Um, or you're not truth. Like it's, it's, that's the terms it, that they use. That totally makes yeah. sense because when I was writing my book, um, I had to say it out loud. Mm. And um, it's, a, it's something that I found very beneficial when I write. You can write something, but then you go, like you can write a speech and then you go to say it and it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't sound like you. You just realize you didn't write a speech. You wrote some pointing talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go back to the drawing board and say it out loud <laughs> you know so yeah. that's really interesting that like if you have that ability to express yourself then what about all the people out there because there's so many different ways of learning right and so mm -hmm. if 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 you use um the way that is strongest for you, you're still more likely to even not just be able to connect 100% more with people that also um, are emotionally based that way, but you would also be able to connect with a lot more other people because you understand them better because you've understood that you had to overcome this for yourself. And and do you why do they say authority? Is that because it's like um, your leading way of being? That's, that's exactly it, Colette. Yes. And, you know, the thing that I that we both Morgan and I love about human design as a tool really is it gives you permission to move through life and interface with life and with other people in a way that that with the least resistance, put it that way. So it really helps you to tune into how you're designed um, rather than living to the way that you've been conditioned to behave and to be, you know, so like for me, for example, my authority is the same as Morgan. I'm also emotionally defined. That is my emotional authority. When I learned that, that was a light bulb moment for me because it gave me permission to slow down and to wait for emotional clarity before making big decisions. Otherwise I'm just reacting versus responding to life. And meaning I'm chasing and that reactionary space is always a space of lack. Oh, gosh, it's never like the, you know, the, it's never <clears throat> the happy ending it could be. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, because what people don't understand is they'll say, I feel sad. Mm -hmm. But actually, you don't feel sad. You feel a set of reactions that are chemical that are going on in your body and the accumulations of every time you felt that and you labeled it sad. Right. And when you have that reaction, you can't respond. And so, because you, it's kind of, and I find that it's most challenging for when people have mixed emotions. Right. So like if on one set, like they love, it, it's kind of like when someone gets kidnapped and they start resonating with their kidnapper, you know, <laughs> um, so, you know it's survival, like you said, because that always comes from lack. So how do people overcome this? Like, how does it help to know what your authority is besides that? Um, how do you, how else can you use this information? Well, I mean, I think, you know, in terms of you can apply this information to anything really in life to do with business, to do with your relationships. Um, you know, I can talk about from my personal experience, knowing this information, this insight into how I'm designed has it's really helped me to um, it's really helped me to have sustainable energy for the opportunities that are right for me, you know? Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not um, because if you're reacting, usually it seems good in the moment and it might be exciting. Yeah. 
but one of my colleagues is the father to four daughters and he said I get nervous when women get excited (laughs) (laughs) I mean I've got I mean I'm sure we can all relate to that I have personal experience of you know an opportunity coming my way and I get really excited about it straight away and I go oh yes 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 that's I'm doing it it's a yes for me and then I sleep on it and wake up the next day and my body goes err not sure about that that is an indication that it's not the right thing for you, you know? Um, and I mean, we, we all... in energy work, I would say that means that you're out of alignment. You're weak yes. with being said. It doesn't mean that you can't go forward with it. It means yes. that if you clear the weaknesses, it's more likely to succeed. But that's where I feel like it's so important to plug into your heart. Yes. To access your authentic desires because people are pretty good at, most people are pretty good at putting one foot forward in front of the other and making themselves do things and beating themselves into doing it. And this, so how can we be more like, cause um, the, the human design is more about being mm. and less doing is, is the goal, you know? Yeah, so. absolutely. Well, you uh, go ahead, Morgan. Oh, yeah, no, I was, I was going to say, um, it's, it's really about getting to, for me, it's really about getting to know myself better and to getting, getting to know, um, like with human design that there's a process called deconditioning and they say it takes about seven years to decondition. (laughs) There's that seven year cycle there. (laughs) talking about yeah so so that's that's the time where we go through and clear all these layers of of the way we were operating and how we've sort of uh, you know habits we've developed and all sorts of things and it's just getting to know really what our yes our instincts are or our natural tendencies and and really befriending them and getting back into alignment with that but working with the God-given qualities, because yeah. it's so, I, I, I really, if people understood how, like, it, how important it is for each and every one of us, like, we're important, like, we're, like, but everybody else is important, so don't get a big head. <laughs> but um, we all have our own special talents to bring to anything. So anything that we do is special because no one else is us that can do it exactly like we do it. And, you know, it may be that special way you say it, or it may be that special way that you write it and it, it um, reaches even one person. And then that one person does something absolutely amazing. And then, you know, then your work on earth is done and you can just have a nice. (laughs) Yeah. Go with the flow. (laughs) <laughs> we have to take a short break here. Uh, this is Colette Marie Stefan, and you're listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio. We're live on Facebook, and you can call in 1 800 930 2819. We'll be right back after this short break. Hello, everyone. This is Colette Marie Stefan. You're listening to The Truth is Funny on Transformation Talk Radio, and we're live on Facebook. So uh, it's good, so good to um, connect with my dynamic duo from the Replenishing Life Project. Uh, we have uh, Morgan B. and Lucy Ann Shard. And I was just talking about how, um, you know, I've been uh, busy, like, um, I think I'm on Project 27 in my yard. <laughs> And um, my daughter, had, you know, had that freak accident and just had surgery. So I've been focusing a lot on studying and all of that sort of thing. And I put together, um, I've taken Float Your Boat off um, my website because I'm, I'm, it's going to be, become part of my online program. But I have a new program up. It's, come, it's every Thursday, 8.30 till 9. And it's Get Your Shift Together. <laughs> And there's up to seven people. It's $39.99. You can hop on and you can send me an issue and I'll work on it because I'm finding a lot of people are having things happen to them very fast right now. And it might be like, can you just test this call at? Um, I'm really excited. One of my clients um, just sold a house, the contractor, and then another client just sold her house 
was freaking out. We had a consultation yesterday, freaking out because, oh my God, I sold my house in six days for more money than, than, than asked for. And oh my God, now we got to find a house too. I just got an email this morning too. We got the house. Wow. <laughs> so in six day, in, in one week, almost this, this client turned around, like um, put up their house, sold it in six days and bought the house. And it's beautiful. It's what they were looking for. <laughs> I, I told them, get your little girl. She's a little sweetheart to draw a picture of the house she wants. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the kind of energy like like you know when we're talking like there can be ups and downs here but mm -hmm. we want to know like um Lucianne, you were going to talk a little bit about north node and south node yes. and about how we can apply this information so that we can move forward in a powerful way at this time yeah, absolutely. So, you know, astrology is one of the other tools that we love to use um, in the Replenishing Life Project. And Morgan and I, you know, we talk about astrology a lot. So this is one of our, our real passions. And, you know, the, the thing about the North Node and the South Node, um, in your chart, in your natal astrology chart, the North Node looks, uh, the symbol looks a little bit like uh, a pair of headphones. <laughs> and the south node symbol will look like an upside down horseshoe okay so if you want to have a look in your chart and follow along sorry what did the first one look like so the north node looks a bit like a pair of headphones oh, okay okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> like your headphones call it yeah. <laughs> um so when we're talking about the north and the south node we're we're getting a sense of the soul's journey okay, in astrology, the north node is called a destiny point. It is the guiding light in your chart. And it, it shows us where our soul feels a little bit uncomfortable, but it's venturing towards this destiny point. And the south node, which is always the direct opposite of the north node, shows our comfort zone. Okay, so it's sometimes we feel the pull to go towards the south node to go back towards the south node because it feels familiar um the it's the area of life that will call you back into old habits old patterns so there's a lot of gold in your south node in understanding that area of familiarity and comfort um and so the south node and the north node are pieces of the same puzzle and the the, the goal is to really find a sense of harmony between the two in this lifetime wow that's beautiful like uh so um how can people find out what their north node and their south node are just for those that are not well i mean we would suggest you go to a site um, such as astro.com you need your birth information and for a really accurate reading you'd need your birth time so ensure that you have your birth time um so you put your birth your birthday and your birth time and your location of where you were born to cast your natal astrology chart um you will get a, a, a beautiful chart that you can look at and then look onto your um, on your chart you will find those two symbols that we mentioned so the, the north node uh looks like a pair of headphones and the south node looks like a, an upside down horseshoe um and, and then so are those two opposite each other on that pie chart they're always opposite in terms of sign and house they are always on an opposite axis so for example i have a north node in leo my south node is in aquarius and um you know there's a whole lot of archetypal juicy juicy information that we you know that you can go into about the soul's trajectory um, and how you can start to bring more energy of your north node into your life well because it's very interesting sometimes when babies like when women are pregnant and mm -hmm. the babies do and there's maybe issues or whatever and the baby's not coming yet it, it'll often often come up, up astrological yes and um so why is that why is it so important that um, at the time and the day and where we were, the location, how does that affect our whole life? Well, I think, you know, from an astrological point of view, and actually, you know, also from human design, because human design, you, you, you get your chart from the same information. It's the way I like to describe it is it's really a, it's a blueprint for your potential 
in this life. And, you know, the other thing that I think is important to say here is that with any reading, with any chart like this, it gives you a, a sample of the menu, but it doesn't tell you what the meal is going to be like. So, um, you know, that's a really important thing to say is really up to you as to how you apply your consciousness and your experience to the blueprint that you're, that you're given. That. Yeah, I love that because, you know, that's how I've always seen it. I see the potential in people. Yes. And I see so much potential because people really actually don't use that much of their potential. Most people, four or 5%. And mm. unfortunately, a lot of the time they're um, going off their subconscious mind. So they get mm. triggered into these old reactions like you're talking about. So the South Node isn't evil. <laughs> Just, no, not at all. I'm just teasing. <laughs> Sometimes when you're repeating the South Node, yeah, you're like, get me some um, um, some Northern gear. I'm going. I'm going downhill skiing. Yeah. I mean, the thing I'm about going, the South I'm paddling this week. <laughs> I, I want to go. Yes. <laughs> so, explain to us then: is that on an astrological chart? Is that the magnetic North, or is that true North? Oh, good question. Um, so I would work with True North. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because and just on you can look that up also, right? Like how yeah. off degree because your compass will show you magnetic north, That's but you it. can look up how many degrees either way. That's you right. Know, yeah, you That's are right. or True North is where you live. Yeah. That's it. And just to your point of what you were saying about the South Node, um, Colette, you know, the thing is, one of the ways to recognize if you are in your South Node vibe is if you're if you're feeling really com uh, uncomfortably comfortable, right? So if you're feeling a little stagnant, that's often when we're kind of lounging in that South Node vibration. <laughs> and so, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing bad with that because it's familiar. But it's not when you start buying um, M and M's, <laughs> <laughs> quite possibly. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> you know, like you go for comfort food. That's you it. go for like those old comforts. Like I call it, like um, that best friend of yours that actually was cheating um, with your husband. <laughs> wow! Yeah. But they're familiar, so you're kind of like. Well, at least I know what they're going to do. <laughs> so a lot of people I will see hold on really, really tight to um, what they had, even though they yes. don't even really like it that much. And don't yes. you think this is kind of like, it's kind of like we're being like forced mm. yeah. to face our shift. <laughs> That's it. I love how you said that. Um, well, the thing with the South Node also, you know, when you look at it from an evolutionary astrology point of view is the South Node is is what we bring with us into this lifetime. So there, there often are relationships, patterns in relationships that we will revisit again and again, as we go through the spiral of making that pattern more conscious so that we can transform it. See a lot. Transmute it. I'm getting this is so beautiful. Um, is it possible just to, to skip this break, Zach? Okay, that's what we're going to do because I think like this is really, really fundamental for a lot of people is mm. that nothing is linear in mm. energy or it's spiral. Like, yes. And so, you know, um, for someone like, because Morgan, you were going to talk a little bit about the, like what, what are the benefits of using this information and how can you be more like, and I'm getting for, for you, it's kind of like um, what you're saying is that when you start to understand how you operate and how you're at your highest potential, then you're, you don't waste your time like you used to, mm. but you're more able to be than do. So Morgan, you were saying you were going to talk a little bit about that. Can, you know, we hear a little bit about that from you. Sure. Yeah. Um, so just going back to human design, if, if anybody wants to look up their chart, their human design chart, there's a beautiful site called geneticmatrix.com. And you can go in and get a, a free chart there and start exploring. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, uh, so with human design, for example, um, there are 
different, they call them, it's called strategy. And, and there is a, um, a strategy to the way the different types operate. And that has been, uh, so for example, that has been very eye-opening for me. Um, so knowing that my type is a generator, it's called a generator, and my strategy is to wait and respond. So as a generator, I'm always responding to life. And you could say, you know, every being is sort of responding to life, but that is where a generator, that's where my clues are. That's where my, uh, you know, the, the opportunities and the gold lie in that um, responding to life. And it's also, you know, your body and your energy responding to life. So um, this is my generator card. Yeah, uh, and I'm working on the Oracle at this time and yeah. she's the Empress. Oh, I yes. love the Empress. And, um, mm. I feel that you do hold this energy beautifully. Like what oh, you're thank describing you. is that energy because um, when you learn that it's not wise for you to get all it, cause you're easily excited mm -hmm. because you're a happy, buoyant person. So you mm -hmm. see like, you know, you'll be like, oh, that sounds good. That sounds great. You know, oh my goodness, that would be so much fun. Yeah. But then somebody has to organize it and stuff. And then you're good at that. And then before you know it, you're the organizer and you're not the, you know. For everything. Yes. It's like, that's when your type A personality kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so, and, and as to what you were saying, now knowing what I know about my strategy and authority, which I mentioned earlier, it's, it's allowed me to um, conserve my energy a lot more and just, um, and to, uh, focus it in the in a way that is most powerful and most grounding and centering for for myself so yeah um and going back to i can mention the different the other authorities that there are in case anybody else is interested and also lucy lucy and i have um we did uh, a youtube video on this the other week where we go more in depth about the strategy and authority of human design. So if anyone wants to check out our YouTube channel. Yeah, um, because you, you, like you were saying, what is your YouTube channel? Just this. Um, it, Replenishing Life Project. So that's awesome. our YouTube channel. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have the other authority. So I mentioned uh, emotional, Lucy and I are, are emotional authority. We also have sacral authority. So that's uh, about the gut response, tuning into the gut and the gut response. Um, so this is just brief, uh, just go over these briefly. There's the splenic authority and that's coming from the, the center of intuition and instinct. So that it's, it's a lot more subtle. It's in the moment, but it, it's, it's a lot more subtle. Um, and then there is the, the, the ego authority. So it's more about um, trusting what you say, you say or do spontaneously in the moment. Um, and then we have the identity authority or self-projected, and that's all about the, letting the heart decide. So, um, and then we have the outer authorities, like there's um, what's called a mental projector and there's a reflector as well. So these are um, people that, it, you know, really benefit from having that sounding board and, and hearing things, um, not censoring their words, but allowing their truth to come out in their words and reflectors very, special and unique because there's only 1% of the world of the population is our, our reflectors. Um, and that's, they well, the connect to the population are reflectors and yes. the rest of them are all projectors. <laughs> <laughs> that means a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the projector is, well, projectors are different type, but how they, they both have an, it's called an outer authority. So um, reflectors, uh, they live by the, the moon cycle, the lunar cycle. So it's this beautiful 28 day cycle that they have. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's so fascinating. There's so many layers to human design and, and so many uh, nuggets of wisdom that, that well, you can that, learn about yourself. That's what's so beautiful because um, when you talk about this, it's, it's what I talk about in energy work, only I use different words to describe a similar thing. And I love that. I love how um, we're all able to communicate in all these different ways. You know, like um, I always was wondering, like, why is it that I have a tendency to um, attract 
colleagues and that like like engineers you know uh like like flies to shift <laughs> and it's like <laughs> i'm an artist like <laughs> <laughs> i must drive them nuts <laughs> because i don't think like that but i do think like that that's mm -hmm. what's so interesting i um I actually apply a very logical process to my paintings, which is something that I'm starting to notice yeah. as I come to the end of 64 of them. <laughs> you know, the series, and this is important. We are being given the opportunity to revisit who we are. So let's have some fun with it. You know, yeah. um, people are so worried that they're gonna find out, oh my God, I'm gonna find out horrible things about myself. Mm. You know, and they're afraid to look at it and say like is it possible for things to change and so I just love what the work that you guys are doing it's, it's so beautiful I'm just going to check in with Zach and just how much time do we have left okay so what would you like to like what what do you feel strong to um speaking of well the the one thing I just wanted to speak to that in terms of you know people feeling afraid or uncertain about checking in you know with their charts for example with these three modalities that we talk about human design astrology and the gene keys we haven't talked about the gene keys today but it's one of our favorite modalities is certainly our you know our approach and the way that we work with these modalities is about empowerment and it is about having the knowledge having the insight so that you can make decisions that are correct for you so you know we don't like to use the approach that the the celestial weather directs how you are in life yeah, well, it's actually the other way around yeah so yeah. that's very much our approach very very interesting because i've seen this happen at seminars where people inside the seminar like if you're working with someone who's really challenged and upset it'll rain outside and then mm -hmm. when that person shifts their emotions then the sun will come out and you start to notice that you take a bunch of like when I, I didn't know back then, but I was kind of like the den mom I had, I was home with my kids and I had a really large yard. And if it was raining, it would suck because I'd have all these kids and <laughs> I'd be like, I get them to all go outside and sing, um, you know, Mr. Sun, Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, <laughs> please shine down. <laughs> And they'd be singing and sure enough, within five minutes, there'd be a break in the clouds and they'd be so excited because they knew how powerful they really were. Amazing. You know? Yeah. Like, so we have a tendency to be able to be way more powerful. I love this um, idea of recognizing it's kind of like if, if, you, if you use a hammer when you need a screwdriver, <laughs> that's the best way I can, um, yeah. you know, like. It, it, it's just not going to work. So what would you say has been the biggest transformation from for you with this knowledge? And why do you feel so passionate about sharing it in this way? I'll ask both of you that because then we'll probably be close to the end. I mean, I mean, for me, it's, it's about First of all, it's about understanding that there is a synthesis that's happening and we are living through the synthesis of these modalities that have all actually been talked about separately. But what we're starting to do is we're starting to use them in a new way. So that in itself is very empowering. We're starting to understand and take the knowledge and the, the insights and be a real co-creator with source, with the information that we have through the modalities. So that's where the sense of empowerment and embodiment comes uh, for me. And, you know, as a, a what I would say, a, a recovering seeker, <laughs> somebody who was always seeking truth, seeking knowledge, always, always seeking outside of myself, these modalities, the biggest shift that I have seen in myself is knowing how to turn in within. Yeah. Oh, totally. Like, to trust that information and to have faith in yeah, that. Faith in yourself. That exactly. No matter what happens around you, you have faith in yourself that you would be able to test it for yourself and you would take that ego <laughs> yeah. and, and go with that. And so mm -hmm. I just wanted to say on a personal note, I know you went through a lot since we last spoke and I watched you on Facebook and your travel and your journey. And I just want to say, from my heart to your heart, 
um, how very, very, um, is proud the right word? It, like, <laughs> like, I was just like so impressed oh, with the grace you that you handled your situation. It just brings, you. Me, like, yeah. So Morgan, um, for you, <laughs> um, how, I'm just getting such beautiful, like it's so much love yeah. for you and your family. Mm. Thank you, thank you, Colette. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, so like Lucy and I have been using the, um, the moon cycles, like, you know, well, I mean, we've been using all these, these modalities in, in our lives and our businesses and relationships. And, and it's, it's, it's so nice how it feels so much more in the flow to just to, to be aware of what's going on. And so be aware and then still move forward. Um, still take, the, you know, stay, take the, um, the steps to move forward and, or to connect within. And, and it's just kind of, I feel like it's a little added boost when you know what's going on sort of astrologically, or even when you're aware of, you know, your, your human design chart or your astrologies or your gene keys and how you process the information. It feels like life just flows a little more and it's, it's easier to understand others and to connect with others. Mm -hmm. when that for you, like what, what you're talking about, the benefit of this is so huge because when you're in that space centered within yourself, then mm -hmm. you have the patience. <laughs> yeah, really. Trouble, you know, and, and the patience to deal with who oh, we've, we've been asked to deal with a lot. Yeah. Exactly. And, and we're at the end of the show here. And I just want to say thank you so very much. I know I feel a whole lot better. I uh, was feeling a little bit on the tired side with everything that was happening with my daughter. And now and then the relief floods in and then you're like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> but I'm going out paddling now. <laughs> because nice. <laughs> it's a really beautiful day and I'm going to I'm going to get off this show and go right away before I don't. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much um and thank you dr pat for having us on the show i was on dr pat's show last week you can catch that on my website if you missed it and um we'll be back next wednesday nuggets of wisdom bye for now thank you so much blessings to you thank all. you thanks galette thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> lots of love everyone <laughs>